Okay, well, hello, everybody. Um, we're just going to give a few more moments for folks to join us. Um, so appreciate your patience. Okay, well, I think we will we will begin here. Um, so let me start off by uh, welcoming all of you uh, to this evening's event. Um, it's very exciting to have you here uh, to celebrate our students at uh, Cal State San Bernardino History Department. So um, it's going to be a great event, and I'm uh, looking forward to, to all the festivities this evening. Uh, as we begin, uh, let me just give a brief reminder, if you could uh, mute your microphone, um, and throughout the event, if you want to unmute yourself to give a shout out or to clap or to you know, ray, uh, feel free to unmute if you would like. But um, throughout the program, if you aren't trying to interject something, uh, we would appreciate it if you kept muted uh, so that we can uh, proceed smoothly. So, uh, hello again, um, and welcome to CSUSD's Phi Alpha Theta Induction Award Ceremony and Departmental Graduation for 2021. Uh, my name is Dr. Mark Robinson, and I teach courses in U.S. and African American history. Uh, let me begin by expressing the history department's heartfelt congratulations to all the graduates and to express our appreciation to all the parents, family, and friends that have supported our students. Also, I want to extend a hearty congratulations to all returning students who have earned honors and awards. Okay. okay. Um, as we begin our program, let me share CSUSD's land acknowledgement statement. As historians who continually reflect on how our present is shaped by our past, it is fitting that we take a brief moment to acknowledge the indigenous peoples of the land where CSUSB now sits. The official CSUSB land acknowledgement states, we recognize that California State University San Bernardino sits on the territory and ancestral land of the San Manuel Band of Mission Indians. Yahua Vieta, and that the Palm Desert Campus sits on the territory and ancestral land of the Kawiya. We recognize that every member of the California State University San Bernardino community has benefited and continues to benefit from the use and occupation of this land since the institution's founding in 1965. Consistent with our values, of community and diversity, we have a responsibility to acknowledge and make visible the university's relationship to Native people. By offering this land acknowledgement, we affirm indigenous sovereignty and will work to hold California State University San Bernardino more accountable to the needs of American Indian and indigenous peoples. This concludes the land acknowledgement. Now, let me introduce our next speaker, Dr. Tiffany Jones. Thank you. Um, I am so happy to be here and I wanna thank you all again for your attendance to this graduation and to the award ceremony. So I have the privilege of giving some additional words of welcome. And my name is uh, Professor Tiffany Jones, and I am exceptionally proud to be chair of such a stellar department with such dedicated and inspirational faculty and students. This graduation and awards program is really a wonderful opportunity to celebrate the success of all our students and by extension, our whole department. Um, and to all the students out there, we, the faculty and the staff, wish we could be with you in person to share this special time. But we know how hard you have worked 
and we want to applaud your dedication and sacrifice. But despite this kind of online format of this event, which I'm sure we're all uh, getting very tired of, um, we really hope that the joy we feel does not seem distant or virtual because we are genuinely delighted to see your success. You have persevered, you didn't give up, you remain focused on your goals, and now you are here graduating from CSUSB. So we can only imagine the great achievements that are ahead for each and every one of you. Similarly, for those who are joining Phi Alpha Theta or who have earned other awards, you are sincerely a credit to our department. We could not be more proud of you. It's no wonder that our chapter of Phi Alpha Theta won best chapter in our division from the national organization in 2019. And we won this award five times in the last seven years. And it's because CSUSB has some of the best and brightest history students. So to help uh, kick us off with this evening's program, we actually have a brief commencement speech, not by me, but provided by the American Historical Association. Uh, the speaker is Kai Rizdal, who um, kindly uh, put together this speech. He's a former history major who went on to a prominent career in journalism. Some of you may have heard of him because Kai Rizdal is a host and senior editor of Marketplace. It's actually one of my favorite. <laughs> I listen to this all the time. Um, it's actually the most widely heard program on business and the economy. Uh, radio or television, commercial or public broadcasting in the country. And since joining Mark and Place in 2005, Rizdal has hosted the program from China, the Middle East, and dozens of cities, big and small, across the United States. Rizdal speaks regularly with CEOs of Fortune 500 countries, startup entrepreneurs, small business owners, and everyday participants in the American and global economies. He's also interviewed President Obama four times. He is the recipient of a 2012 Emmy Award for investigative journalism on the PBS Frontline documentary about money and politics called Big Sky, Big Money. And Rizdal has appeared often on CNN, CNNBC, and CBS. His written work has been featured in New York Times and The Atlantic. And before his career in broadcasting, Rizdal was not only a history grad, but he spent eight years in the United States Navy, flying from the aircraft carrier USS Theodore Roosevelt, and later worked with the Joint Chiefs of Staff at the Pentagon. He also served in the United States Foreign Service with postings to Ottawa, Canada, and Beijing. He earned his BA in history from Emory University and an MA in National Security Studies from Georgetown University. And he lives in LA with his wife and four children. And so we just want to play these brief remarks from Kai Rizdal. My name is Kai Rizdal, and I'm the host of a public radio program on business and the economy called Marketplace, which I hope at least a couple of you have listened to. And I am truly honored to have been asked to give a very brief, I promise very brief, set of remarks on why I think being a history major is going to help you understand this world. Whether you ever become an actual historian or not, or whether you use history in your professional lives, whatever those lives turn out to be. I believe being a history major and having that knowledge is going to help you understand this world, the country we live in, how everything fits together, and most importantly, why. My wife and I have four kids, and when homework time used to roll around, there were always, it seemed to me, anyway, math and science questions. And the kids would always go straight to my wife, the math and science person. Even when she was traveling for business, they'd get her on FaceTime. Or they would tell me they would just rather wait till she got home than have to work with me trying to figure out something I didn't understand. But I would always offer. Afterward, I would say, come see me if you've got any questions on American constitutional history, 1865 to the present. There were never any questions like that. Their loss, obviously, but the point here is that We've all got skills, right? We've got skills that we've learned and worked at. And you should lean into those history skills you have learned. They're valuable. 
very important. I think it's a universal truth of commencement addresses that you have to quote Maya Angelou. So I'll give you my favorite quote of hers right here. I'm sure you've heard it before. I have great respect for the past, she said. You can't really know where you're going until you know where you've been. And you all, through your work and your study of history these past years, can help us understand where we've been. You can give context and meaning. You can give reasoned critiques and analysis. Your knowledge of history can guide us so that maybe when we get where we're going, we understand why and how we got there. Where this country is right now is in a really complicated place. It needs you. It needs the skills that you have, the wisdom you have gained, the insights that you've developed. It needs you. We need you to help us understand where we are going from here. Because if we have learned anything from this country's recent past, it's that we are living history every single day. Congratulations and good luck. So those, uh, that's some great advice from Kai Rizdal. So thank you to him. And also a great example of the various career fields open to history majors. And we have a lot of other great examples on our alumni page, um, on our history page. So you should check those out as well. Our next speaker is going to be Mr. Javier Resendez. He's student representative from the History Club. Uh, hello, fellow Yodis, family and friends. My name is Xavier Resendez, and I am the vice president of the History Club here at CCUSB and the Alpha Delta Nu chapter of Phi Alpha Theta at CCUSB. On behalf of the club and my fellow student leaders, I would like to congratulate all of the graduating students and other honorees. As a history major, I know the late nights and long papers and other challenges of being a history student. It is not easy and our faculty certainly challenge us every day. Before the COVID shutdown, we CSUSB students commonly had to contend with traffic jams and the difficulty of finding parking. Now it's the slow internet and choppy Zoom connections. So the fact that you all overcame these burdens and achieve your goals is truly special. Make sure to take the time to savor this moment and celebrate your unique milestones. To re returning students, good job. And we invite you to become more involved in History Club and the CSUSB chapter of Phi Alpha Theta. Go Yodis. Our next speaker will be Dr. Karp. Thanks so much, Javier. So now we've come to the induction portion of our program. Uh, I'm Dr. Michael Karp. I teach courses in US history, and it's my honor to lead the Phi Alpha Theta ritual of induction as specified by the national organization. On behalf of the Alpha Delta Nu Chapter of Phi Alpha Theta, I would like to welcome you to our initiation of new members. Today, we're celebrating the achievements of those students who have excelled in their study of history. With us today are the current members of Phi Alpha Theta, the new members and their family and friends, and others from the California State San Bernardino community who value the pursuit of historical knowledge. Phi Alpha Theta is a national honor society in history. It was organized at the University of Arkansas in 1921, and since then, it's grown to more than 820 chapters. The membership of Phi Alpha Theta is composed of students and faculty who have been elected to membership on the basis of excellence in the study and writing of history. It is highly democratic, however, and that any student of history may become a member simply by maintaining a high standard of work in their studies. In addition, all the members participate in the work and direction of the society. Phi Alpha Theta is a, prof <coughs> excuse me, is a professional society, which promotes the study of history through the encouragement of research, good teaching, publication, and the exchange of learning among historians in a variety of ways. It seeks to bring students and faculty together both intellectually and socially for mutual understanding and encouragement in their common interest in the study of history. As new members, you'll be expected to live up to the ideals of Phi Alpha Theta, keeping in mind the three important forces contained in the words philia, anthropos, and theos, love, humanity, God. 
Among the invaluable lessons that may be learned from the study of history and the ideals of the society, of the society are, and after I read these, um, you can either unmute and say I or tap, uh, type I into the chat, uh, or you can just say it to yourself. So one, the spirit of respect, which fosters a sincere regard for the rights of each individual. Two, the belief in the community of all persons, which renders abhorrent all ideas that tend to foment national hatreds, racial and sexual discrimination, or any form of injustice. And three, the need for historians to search for truth and to accept the responsibility for making decisions in terms of their meaning for others as well as for themselves. Do you accept the challenges of striving to live up to these ideals of Phi Alpha Theta? If so, please unmute yourself and say aye. 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 Our newest Phi Alpha Thetans are Jacqueline Anton, Israel Bolanos, Marlene Cardenas, Erica Kelly, Celeste Nunez, Javier Resendez, Khalees Saunders, Nicole Sewell, and Cecilia Smith. I am pleased to welcome you as newly initiated members of the Alpha Delta New Chapter of Phi Alpha Theta. Congratulations. And our next speaker will be Dr. Mark Robinson. Yay for the new members of Phi Alpha Theta. Congratulations on this well-deserved honor. As we continue to recognize and celebrate our newest Phi Alpha Theta, you didn't even know that was the term, did you? Um, I would now like to introduce our special Satan, our special pilot Satan, our national president, uh, Dr. Jacob Glosser. Uh, Dr. Glosser, a little bit about him. Uh, Dr. Glosser is a professor of history and director of graduate study in history and political science at Texas Women's University. He teaches courses on colonial and revolutionary America the Atlantic world, and early modern Europe. Glosser is particularly interested in religious history, popular culture, and the history of the book. He holds degrees in history from the University of South Carolina, James Madison University, and Milligan College. And he has been the advisor of the Edda New chapter of Phi Alpha Theta at Texas Women's Christians since 2007 and is the founder of the university student history journal, EBIT. In 2019, he was appointed to the Texas Undergraduate Education Advisory Committee, the state's leading voice on undergraduate education. Wasser's research has appeared in publications such as Church History, the Virginia Magazine of History and Biography, Episcopal History, and the South Carolina Historical Review. He enjoys traveling both in this country and abroad and has visited more than 200 national service sites. Wow. Dr. Blossom, thank you for joining us. You have the floor. Thank you so much, Dr. Robinson. Uh, it's just a great delight to be back with you. I so enjoyed my visit with you uh, in the fall of the year, and I'm delighted to be back uh, with the Alpha Delta New Chapter. Um, you are one of our shining lights in Phi Alpha Theta. Your chapter has a national reputation. Um, your journal, uh, your award-winning journal, I should say, is, a, is an example to universities across the country. Um, and um, your, your, as is your chapter, your award-winning best chapter. Uh, and uh, it is just such a delight to be with you. I thought tonight that I might share just a couple of remarks with you commemorating our 100th anniversary as a society. Those of you who have just joined our society, I congratulate you heartily on this important milestone in your academic career. You've just joined a, a society that is 100 years old. It's one of the nation's oldest and largest honor societies. We have almost uh, um, a thousand chapters, and we have more than half a million members now. And so it's, uh, it's a, a dynamic and uh, alive society. In fact, I've actually traveled more than any of my predecessors as president of Phi Alpha Theta. The sad thing is I haven't left my living room yet. 
but I've been Zooming all across the country, uh, visiting chapters uh, more than I can count, uh, from Maine to California. Uh, and I do say this very sincerely, that your chapter is my favorite. I, I truly, truly enjoy visiting with you. Uh, this is my second time with you, and I just, just love it very much. Um, but I can tell you that our society is, is alive and thriving and growing, and quite simply, we are stronger because you are a member of our society. So I wanna take just a few minutes and reflect a little bit with you on the past, on the hundred years behind us and what that might mean for us as a society moving forward. You probably know that Phi Alpha Theta was founded in 1921 on the campus of the University of Arkansas. Nels Clavin, our founder, gathered the first four members of what he called the University History Society together in a classroom, and he inducted them uh, into this society. A month later, he changed the name to Phi Alpha Theta. You know, we actually know very little about Phi Alpha Theta's first uh, induction service. Dr. Clavin was a master mason, and he kept the society secret in the early days, didn't want any outsiders coming in, swore the members to secrecy. We don't even know what words Clavin used to induct the first members. Um, we know that Frederick Adler had yet to write the society's first induction service. That induction service, by the way, was 90 minutes long. So, um, you know, you might think my remarks are long, but, but 90 minutes long just to join Phi Alpha Theta 100 years ago. Um, the fact that Clavin called it, uh, the first service was a short, simple service. So we don't think he used Clay Adler's 90 minute long service. An early president of the society, George Hammond, later praised the use of candlelight at services, saying that the soft white glow gave a beauty and solemnity to the occasion. But we have no idea if Clavin used candlelight at his first induction. We also don't know if Dr. Clavin made the inductees appear blindfolded, something he later claimed, and these are his words, helped to give the proper psychological effect to the service. Now, quite frankly, I think it'd scare me to death, but anyway, um, um, he, uh, we got rid of that practice pretty early on in our history, by the way. We also don't know if Clavin hosted a big banquet in 1921. We know he did that in 1922, something he called a right joyful event. But we have no idea if any service, any banquet or feast followed the first induction in 1921. For as much as we don't know about Phi Alpha Theta's first induction service a century ago, Dr. Clavin gave us one clue about this important moment in our society's history. The students, he wrote, seemed fully alive to the larger significance of what was being done. You know, what a difference a century makes from the first four inductees gathered by Dr. Clavin on the campus of the University of Arkansas. Our society has grown to include more than a thousand, or nearly a thousand chapters and more than half a million members, a professional journal that is a leader in our field and a healthy endowment that makes possible a whole array of scholarships and paper prizes and annual awards. Every year, thousands of students affiliated with our society present papers at uh, regional meetings. They also go to Phi Alpha Theta lectures and movie nights and trivia parties, even on Zoom in these uh, difficult times. Our website, phialphatheta.org, contains a wealth of valuable information. Uh, and um, you can learn all about our paper prizes, which, by the way, have been doubled this year. We've actually doubled the number of prizes we're awarding. One question that I have a century after our founding is, um, are we still alive to the significant role that Phi Alpha Theta can play in the lives of its members or in the, in the larger society in which we live? Nels Clavin tells us that the early charter members of the Alpha chapter were fully aware of the larger significance of their membership in Phi Alpha Theta. As the heirs to their society, I wonder if we share their awareness of Phi Alpha Theta's significance in our own lives. Dr. Clavin and the other early founders of Phi Alpha Theta spoke of the idea of Phi Alpha Theta as a powerful force that animated members of our society. Today, the idea of Phi Alpha Theta is encapsulated in our society's three ideals, which you just agreed to in the induction service. They are the spirit of respect, which inculcates a sincere regard to the rights of each individual to freedom, the belief in the community of all persons, which renders abhorrent all ideas that tend to foment national hatreds, racial and sexual discrimination, and all forms of injustice, and the need for historians to search for truth 
and to accept the responsibility for making decisions in terms of their meaning for others as well as themselves. When a person joins Phi Alpha Theta, as you just did, she or he is asked a simple question. Do you accept the challenge of living up to the high ideals of Phi Alpha Theta? These ideals you see form the bedrock of who we are as one of the nation's oldest and largest honor societies. These ideals are key to understanding the significant role that Phi Alpha Theta can play in the lives of its members. Importantly, our ideals aim higher than what one early Phi Alpha Theta president called pleasant sociability and the promotion of fellowship among kindred minds. Our ideals aim at equipping our members to lead lives of service and significance. Members of our society are called to live out our three ideals every day of their lives. We are called to work for justice. We are called to build inclusive communities. We are called to reject racism and bigotry. We are called to take responsibility for our actions. In a world where injustice and violence are omnipresent, we are called to work for equity and peace. What sets Phi Alpha Theta apart in the idealistic quest for a better world is our reliance on history. Phi Alpha Thetans do not run away from the past out of a simplistic fear of repeating it. Rather, we embrace the lessons of history, both good and bad, in sculpting an equitable and just future. Issues of justice and reconciliation and empathy are not only the building blocks of the future, but they are also at their core rooted in our common past. By using the lessons of yesterday to build better tomorrows, our ideals call us to look backward and forward at the same time. They call us to use our unique insight into human history to sculpt a better world for future generations. The idea of Phi Alpha Theta expressed in our society's three ideals is lofty. Our founders set a high bar for us. The work of Phi Alpha Theta is not that of a semester or a degree plan, but rather a lifetime. That's why your membership in our society is for life, with no renewals, by the way, needed. You don't have to pay any more money. The ideals of Phi Alpha Theta require nothing less than a lifetime of commitment. When we join Phi Alpha Theta, we accept the challenge of living into these ideals. And it is my fervent hope that throughout your lives, you will continually find purpose and significance in our three ideals. You know, I wonder in this centennial year what Nels Clavin would think of Phi Alpha Theta a century on. He'd probably want us to bring back the blindfolded initiation services, quite frankly. But I think he'd also look out at us and say, as he did at the Alpha chapter in 1921, that we are fully aware of the larger significance of our membership in Phi Alpha Theta. I think he would see the embers of the Phi Alpha Theta idea burning inside each and every one of us as we daily live into our society's three ideals. It's such a delight to be with you this evening. I offer my sincere congratulations on this important milestone in your academic career and my sincere best wishes to each and every one of you as you discover the true significance of being a member of the nation's best honor society. Thanks very much. Yay, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, Jacob. That was wonderful. Um, Professor Blasa, you, your remarks are always wonderful and you are welcome anytime, as long as you don't blindfold us and make us do odd ceremonies. <laughs> I'm happy that that's a, a, a past ceremony. Okay, so now uh, we're gonna move on to the next part of our program. We're gonna recognize our other award winners. And to begin, I am really honored to present the GPA, the highest GPA awards, which is given to exceptional students who obtain the highest GPA in their specific track within the history major. Um, and we have three tracks or concentrations now that we're on semesters um, in our department. And so we have actually three winners. Um, and you should all be proud of yourselves for graduating, but these three individuals happen to get, and this is a feat because I know how tough our faculty grade um, to get such high GPAs. So um, the history department does have very high standards and the students who have won this uh, year's award are top of their class. So the winners are for the first one is our general concentration, previously known as the track B concentration, is Hunter Cataclisi. 
Um, I can see you and I don't know if this works, but I am going to spotlight you and see if, <laughs> if anybody can see. Oh, you're front and center now on page of my computer. So you, congratulations. Tiffany. And I'm spotlighting you because you not only got the highest GPA in the general concentration of track B, but you also got the Thank highest you. GPA of the department. And if you don't mind, I'm going to tell everybody what it was. It was 3.964. So you graduated summa cum laude. So congratulations. Thank you, Tiffany. And I appreciate my professors in the history department who love history and made my learning experience a fascinating one. My history classes gave me a new perspective on the United States and the world, including social, economic, and political histories. Well, thank you, Hunter. I'm mm -hmm. gonna unspotlight you now. So you no longer spotlighted. Okay. Um, let's see, uh, our second one is for our pre-credential concentration or previously known as track A. Um, and th the winner of this is, and I don't know if he's with us today, Brian, if you are here, it's Brian Monty. Um, speak up if you are here. He uh, got a GPA of 3.916 and he graduated magna cum laude. Are you here, Brian? I don't think so. Okay, and our third uh, uh, highest GPA award goes for to uh, Marlene Cardenas, who is uh, obtained the highest GPA. And I know you are here, Marlene. Let me see if I can spotlight you, um, if you don't mind. If you don't have your video on, that's fine, but you're welcome to say something and just unmute yourself if you want. Um, and that is for public history or track C. And uh, she, Graduated cum laude with a 3.735 GPA. So congratulations to all three of you. Whoop, <laughs> it's so quiet on Zoom. Okay, so congratulations to our winners. To present the next award, let me introduce Dr. Michael Karp. Hi again, everybody. Um, so it truly is my pleasure to present the Department Service Award. Uh, each year, the department selects a student or students who show tremendous dedication to the department and a commitment to the profession of history in general. In addition, this winner has been an active leader in history club and even made an appearance at one of our history department meetings. Uh, so again, it is my pleasure uh, to announce that this year's winner is Javier Resendez. Congratulations. Yay, hooray. Very well deserved. Uh, and our next speaker will be presented, or next award will be presented by Dr. Robinson. Okay, uh, congratulations, Javier, and, and all the other winners. Um, I next have the privilege of uh, presenting a scholarship award. It's the J.C. Robinson Scholarship. Uh, and this is a scholarship for students with an interest in Hispanic history and culture. In order to win the scholarship, uh, students must be majoring in history. They must have earned 12 units in courses on Hispanic history or culture, uh, and they must be returning juniors or seniors. Eligible students submit a writing sample, and then their writing is judged according to its merit, and then the winner is selected. Uh, this year we have two winners and so either one of them would like to uh, speak up uh, we'll be happy to spotlight you uh, the first winner is mariano sebastian peinado uh, is mariano here yay mariano our second winner is angel guadalupe Vinega. yay angel Congratulations. So, um, again, we're very proud of our students and we will move on to the next award, uh, which is gonna be presented by Dr. David Yagubian. Good evening, everyone. I'm Dr. David Yagubian and I teach courses in world history and the Middle East. I'm pleased to announce the winner of the Dr. Cheryl Riggs Endowed Student Award Fund. After 25 years of service teaching students at CSUSB, Dr. Cheryl Riggs established this award to pay it forward to a fellow first-generation and re-entry uh, college student. 
To qualify, students must be a first generation or returning student, hold a minimum grade point average of 3.0 and show promise for future excellence. We have one winner for this award this year. Uh, congratulations to Esmeralda Carreno Calderon. Uh, I need to switch screens to clap. Great job, Esmeralda. Um, okay, we have two different scripts. So, uh, okay, our next award uh, is going to be presented by Dr. Bob Blackie. Hello, everybody. Uh, I am uh, Dr. Robert Blackie. I'm an emeritus professor of history. That means that I have graduated. And I've taught at, I taught at Cal State, um, while teaching at Cal State, I taught courses on English history, European history, as well as world history, and a course on revolutions, uh, which is a global kind of course. I'm pleased to announce the, uh, the winners of this year's award. The, it's called the Professor Robert Blackie Endowed Student Award Fund. After 50 years of service teaching students here at Cal State, I established this award to support those students who are seeking to go on to careers in either secondary education, history secondary education, or college and university education, teaching at the college and university level. Students to qualify have to, have, to have a minimum uh, GPA, uh, and then they uh, must also 3.0 rather, and they have to show promise of future excellence. <clears throat> Excuse me. We have two winners this year. Uh, the first is Christina Ann Cardinal. Uh, again, I have no idea whether she is here, but I'm applauding. Uh, and the other winner is Alma Lilia Jimenez. And I'm told she's not here. So we're applauding the spirits of these students. Uh, well, thank you. Uh, I am now turning the uh, microphone, so to speak, over to my colleague, my, my former colleague, Tim Pytel. I'm just going to say Sola is here. She's joining us. And Sola, you oh. in France? Oh, okay. She's. I'll... It's, it's currently 4.40 in the morning, but I am I am here <laughs> as awake as I can be. Congratulations. Congratulations. Sola. Thank you. Okay. Well, congratulations. Nice to see you, Bob. Um, always appreciative. I'm here. Uh, I'm Tim Pytel, and I teach courses in European history. And I'll now present the Schofield McAfee Award. It was established in 2010 by Dr. Joyce Hansen. And the Schofield McAfee Award honors two professor emeriti of the history department, Kent Schofield and Ward McAfee, both of whom were great intellectual contributors to the department and university. Uh, this award is given to a junior level student that have a grade point average between 2.5 and 3.5. The winner must also work hard, attend classes regularly, and produce academic work that has improved over time because of their efforts. And then the winner is most importantly are nominated by the faculty. Uh, and we have one winner for this award, and I'm, I'm so proud to say he, he's in one of my classes, and it was the first time I had got to know him, uh, but he's ideal for this uh, award, uh, one of the harder working and smarter and interesting uh, students, Devin Gillen. Congratulations. Uh, Devin, um, I uh, spotlighted you. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, well, thank you very much for being recognized here, here coming from uh, Chafee Community College. It feels, um, uh, it's really nice, like, thank you. So she, um, uh, thanks for announcing me, Professor Mattel. Well-earned and well-deserved. Okay, uh, so congratulations. The next award will be presented by Dr. Alonso. Hi, everybody. I am Dr. Isabel Guacuja Alonso, and I teach courses in world history and in South Asia. And next we have the Margaret McGann Catter Award, which was set up in 2016 in order to honor her dedication to academic excellence. The scholarship is meant to help women, veterans, and other students who are pursuing a degree in history in the hopes that recipients will value learning, art, and service. The winner of this award fulfills all of these values, and therefore we're very pleased to present it to Mariano Sebastián Peinado. And congratulations. Is Mariano here with us? Mariano? Um, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Congratulations, Mariano. 
Thank you. So our next award will be presented by Dr. Patel. Okay, I was especially a pr pr uh, proud to present this award. It's the Michael Purcell Memorial Scholarship in European History, and uh, he was the person who hired me. And so it's, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely happy to be uh, presenting this. So the Michael Purcell Memorial Scholarship in European History is awarded to a CSU B history major with an interest in European history that is reflected in coursework, personal interest, or travel in the region. Preference is given to students with a GPA of over 3.5 <clears throat> and an interest particularly in 19th and 20th century European history and who enjoy history for its own sake apart from school requirements. And I can once again confirm as since the students is in my class, uh, this winner's ideal and uh, generally fits the criteria. Uh, Gio or Giovanni uh, Gonzalez, congratulations. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Patel, I appreciate that. I want to say thank you to Dr. Patel and Dr. Keynes for allowing me for this, for this reward. I feel I, it's an honor, thank you guys so much. Well deserved, well deserved. Okay, and uh, once again, uh, Dr. Alonzo will announce the next honoree. Right, did I got that right? Yeah. Isabel? Sorry, I needed to unmute myself. <laughs> yeah. So this year we have one additional and very ex exciting award to celebrate. And that's the Outstanding Undergraduate Award for the entire College of the Social and Behavioral Sciences. And this award was won, uh, this award won, this student won the award for the exceptional record of academic success, which earned acceptance into UC Berkeley's Middle Eastern Studies PhD program. The student was also selected for the prestigious Eugene Cota Robles Fellowship, a four-year scholarship. And this is a highly competitive fellowship presented only to the top admitted doctoral students. While at CUSB, this student has been a Mellon Mays undergraduate fellow, a supplement instructor leader, a research assistant for Professor Kate Liska, and an essential grocery store worker during the COVID pandemic. And the winner of this award um, for all these accomplishments for the outstanding undergraduate award for the entire College of Social and Behavioral Sciences is Fernando Sanchez. Um, congratulations to Fernando. And as his uh, mentor for the Mellon Mays program, it's really a pleasure and, and a great honor to present it. And now as we transition to the recognition of our graduate students, I would like to invite Fernando to speak. As a graduating senior, senior he has agreed to serve as our keynote speaker and offer some remarks. And Fernando, the mic is yours. Hello, and uh, thank you so much, Dr. Alonzo. It means a lot that you present this award to me. Um, hello, and congratulations to the class of 2021. I wanna begin by thanking the department chair, Dr. Tiffany Jones, for ensuring that this department is one of the best on campus. I also wanna thank Dr. Jeremy Murray for all of the wonderful panels and talks that he helped organize. Attending them was both fun and enlightening. I also wanna give a special thanks to Drs. Isabel Alonzo, Ryan Keating, Kate Liska, and Dave Dugubian, all of whom have been particularly inspiring and helpful. I am, however, aware that if other students were in my place today, they would have a different list of influential professors to thank. So in place of that, I wanna offer my sincere thank you to every professor in the history department. All of you are inimitable and original, and you give each and every student a unique experience. Of course, recognition of not just my friends and families, but the friends and families of all graduates is necessary. They are the people behind the students. I'm sure I'm not alone in the fact that school would have been much more difficult without parents, partners, spouses, siblings, uncles, aunts, cousins, children, and friends giving us constant encouragement. They were the ones be that we bounced ideas off, listened to our rants about subjects they likely knew little to nothing about, and soothed our tired souls when we were up at 3 a.m. studying for finals and had to go to work right after class. Sometimes they simply said, I love you and I'm proud of you. And that was enough to get us through the day. But most of all, I wanna thank my fellow students. You all have made attending Cal State San Bernardino truly special. I met so many wonderful, bright people from all walks of life. Some were transfer students much like myself. Others were commuters or people fresh out of high school. 
Still others had families to take care of, and on top of that immense responsibility, decided to go get a college degree as well. All of you helped create an intellectual environment of integrity and rigor. Our professors gave us interesting questions and concepts to ponder, but it was up to us to be creative and compelling. And on that front, I think we certainly succeeded. Even though some days were difficult, I loved going to class and waited in pleasing anticipation of what new insights my classmates would bring to lectures. I'll always remember discussing the fall of the Ottoman Empire and the ramifications it had on the world, debating whether or not today's China is that of Mao Zedong or Deng Xiaoping's, and putting together group projects on boundary steel of the Middle Kingdom and wondering what their true purpose was. To all of the students that made these experiences possible, I say thank you. I would feel remiss if I did not end by stressing the grandeur of all of the accomplishments of the graduating students and the exciting position they now find themselves in. What this graduation represents is the culmination of your care, determination, and labor. No matter how difficult or overwhelming things might have been, no matter how long your commute was, how much reading you still had to complete, or how many pages that damn essay still needed, not even when a global pandemic thrust you into the new frontier of online learning, learning did you falter. And yes, of course, we have to talk about COVID. Through that massive historical curveball, that crushing reminder of the fragility of society, you persevered. You had the fortitude to set out on a path and see it through to the end. And that, my friends, is something to be very proud of. You accomplished your goals. You did it. You did it. And as college graduates, you now stand upon a precipice of opportunity. While some find that exciting, I always found it a little scary. With opportunity comes uncertainty, challenge, and chances to fail. But fear not, no matter what new path you take and new goal you set, remember you did it once already, and I know you can do it again. The study of history seems particularly apt for the present moment. The world is a little more divided and a little more worse for wear. But we analyze the past not just to learn why people a thousand years ago did what they did, but to learn why people today do what they do. We look not to excuse injustice, but to explain why it exists. As students of history, we scour the past in search of a brighter future. We define the future. Thank you. Thank you so much, Fernando. That was wonderful. Uh, and now we're going to have a slideshow in recognition of our graduates.
Well, congratulations to all the graduates. Uh, round of applause to all of them. We're so proud of you. Um, uh, we're sad that we can't be with you, but um, you know, definitely we invite you to come back and we can see you in the fall or something, or um, you know, when we're back on campus. So, uh, in the in the meantime, please. Uh, just we we express our joy uh, virtually and through through our Zoom. Um, so we're going to transition now to our uh, closing of the program. Uh, and so to do that, I would like to invite uh, Professor David Gubian to the microphone. Thank you, Dr. Robinson. I want to say congratulations again to all the graduates. Please, everyone, give yourselves a round of applause. Go Yotes. It's my honor to give some closing remarks and acknowledgements. First off, let's thank Professor Jacob Blosser for joining us. Thank you, Dr. Blosser. Dr. Blosser, given your various leadership roles, including national president of Phi Alpha Theta and your continuing work as a history professor, we know that you're quite busy. So we thank you for taking the time to join us and speaking to our students. In addition, I'd like to acknowledge our student speaker, Fernando Sanchez. Great job, Fernando. We really appreciate what you shared and we appreciate you. And we really, really uh, look forward to hearing about your successes at Berkeley. It's so exciting. Um, thank you to all the history faculty and staff who spoke in the program and who are in attendance. And a special acknowledgement goes to professors Michael Karp and Mark Robinson who planned and coordinated this awesome event. Let me express our appreciation and acknowledgement to all the parents, loved ones, family, and friends who have been a crucial part of our students' success. You're all important members of the California State University San Bernardino community, and we thank you for all that you do. I hope that you students will remember to keep in touch with your faculty as you embark on new adventures. We love to hear from our alumni, whether it's to ask for letters of recommendation, to celebrate a milestone in your education or professional life, to stop by our office hours or to just drop a line and let us know how you're doing. This is a community that you can continue to call your own as alumni. Your achievements that we are celebrating today are a huge part of what makes it such a great place. This concludes our program. Thank you all for attending and I hope you have a good evening. Congratulations, everybody. Bye. Have a great weekend. Go celebrate. Go, go Congratulations, drink. everyone. Go dance. Go dance. You look on your final paper, some exams. No, Richard. Yes. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Congratulations Very again, Very students. <laughs>